and I'm back. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jez7780, and we're back. I am back with another What Grinds My Gears episode 23. What console future? Halo and Gears. And that's Spider-Man console. Oh, boy. I'm in so, so... Uh, man, that is some crazy stuff. I'm not buying one of those so Spider-Man ones, but have a great time with that because that thing looks amazing. I can't get any more uh, of those things. I've, I've, I got the Star Wars one, <laughs> which, you know, it is what it is. And I got the Destiny one. So, But that Spider-Man one looks incredible. We'll see. Uh, that is really cool, that Spider-Man console. But anyway, we're back. I'm back uh, from a... A little vacation. I was on uh, Planet Xbox last night, you know, getting back in, in the groove with everybody. And, uh, you know, it def definitely uh, got the blood going. So I definitely wanted to expand on what I was trying to explain last night. And, you know, just kind of reading into what's going on and what I feel, my predictions from what I see as to what the future is going to hold for both consoles. What I think the next generation is going to be. What's up, Ayush? What's up, J Jamia Dixon? What's up, guys? So thanks for tuning in. And, and I have the chat popped up. So, you know, feel free to ask questions, jump in. Usually that's how I get on my uh, my my side conversations when people, uh, you know, uh, chat in. So the first thing I wanted to, to go is basically what console future. So... We're at a point right now, like we both had our mid-gen, a quote-unquote mid-gen up, uh, you know, refreshes with the PlayStation 4 Pro and uh, the Xbox One X. Um, I both companies handle those launches differently. Also, Sony introduced new hardware with VR with their Pro, and uh, oh, thanks, man. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, you know, we're at that point now. So we, we got this and this and as of E3, you know, Phil Spencer was basically saying that they are going to make a next a next console. Like, you know, then you know, he wasn't being trans he was just being transparent and basically saying that there's a console coming. And you know, then the rumors came out that's Project Scarlet, that they're working on something. But I what I wanted to, to start with is that both of the the manufacturer, both of the platform holders, both Xbox and and um and Sony, a uh, PlayStation, both kind of launched their mid-gen refreshes different ways. Sony kind of came out there and going, we're not brute forcing it. We're going to release this console that takes the benefit of higher resolution displays, such as 4K, and we're going to use methods as checkerboard rendering and, and uh, you know, temporal injections. But really, they focus on the, the checkerboarding, which simulates 4K, and a lot of their first-party games are utilizing it. God of War utilized it. The um, Horizon Zero Dawn utilized it. Uh, I believe even uh, De Detroit Become Human. And then now uh, the, we just saw the console, Spider-Man. So this technique allows them to use a lower, res like a lower resolution checkerboard to simulate 4K. And uh, and having and then what Mark Cerny said during the presentation is not to brute force it because something like that will cost much more money and it will brute force the the uh, the thing where we're going to utilize, going to keep the cost down and not worry about the design and overheating and stuff like that and just kind of use whatever the 4.7 or 4.5 teraflops it is. And then they released it. And the Pro came out. And again, I think in the first uh, like the first uh, part of the season, like they basically stated that it wasn't, it was like basically four to one that they were selling the, the Pro versus the Slims. And... Um, and that's what it was like, you know, they, they really didn't do what on the other side did with the Xbox One X. So they kind of did a stealth launch with Sony's PlayStation 4 Pro, put it out there, you know, did what they did. Then Microsoft, on the other hand, was very bullish and, and, and very pompous in their presentation of the X. That is the most powerful thing in the world and the most powerful console and uncompromised 4k and and the most the, the 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 biggest pixels and and all this stuff coming up there they went you know they held on to last year's e3 to wait to see it to, to, to announce the name of it which was, it was an x to show it and said wait to e3 the monster is coming they made jackets and now it's just e3 
Then they said about all the uh, then the launch came in November and they had a huge show in their Microsoft store. They had Aaron Greenberg and um, the uh, the uh, the other guy who left. I forgot Alba Pinello. He's gone now, but he jumped out of limos holding up the Xboxes, running down the store. The X they had celebrities there. They had a whole big whoop to do. They had a backstage people playing on Mixa with Halo, uh, you know, Halo five and straight up like doing that stuff. A, the midnight launch they had, they had a whole, it was, a, it was the next console launch. Okay. So somebody's like, well, what is the next Xbox launch going to be like? Go back to November, 2017. That's the next Xbox console launch. They're going to do the same thing. That was on the Phil Spencer. That wasn't a different regime. It was November, 2017. That is going to be, that they took this X and they basically said, this is the next console. That's kind of what they did. Now, when I look to the future and say, well, what is the next generation look like? Well, I think Microsoft is going to go right by that book. Cause they basically just did it in November. Like they're going to do that in 2019, 2020, whenever the next Xbox comes out. But both of them are taking two different approaches to next generation. Microsoft is doing this forward and backwards compatibility. Everything goes with you, similar to a PC model that you buy an i7 fifth generation. You go and buy an i7 sixth generation. You go buy an i7 eighth generation. Oh, an i5 and i now now we'll have an i5 processor, an i7 processor, and an i3 if you know the budget ones. And they're going to follow the cell phone model, and that's why I think Michael Pactor said yesterday that. The Xbox is probably going to come out before PlayStation. And I think everybody's get kind of getting excited. The problem that I have with that is that Microsoft just released the console for the X. And what is the sales? Of, what are the sales of that thing? We don't even know the ratio. Obviously, it's not selling. Okay. And you want to know why? Oh, what is that talk? Why are you talking stupid negative? Why is it not selling? Because ever since it lost, Microsoft has still not captured the number the number one slot in MPD. It still has not outsold. This thing has not boosted up their sales to even compete at the first level MPD. The, the month that it launched, it came out in second. It still has not come out in second since it launched. I think maybe December, but this year in 2018, it has not come in in second at all. It has been third. So I can't see that the X is really boosting up the sales of the S because remember, the S did so bad last year. The S didn't even hit, I think a year ago this year, the S didn't even hit 100,000. And everybody said, because they're waiting for the X. They're waiting for the X. Well, the X is here, people. It's here. So we don't know how well this X is doing. And I'm telling you, the, thing, the problem that we have right now with Microsoft's X is that if they decide to release the X2, it is just going to be this slow kind of like, it's like having going to buy a PC and you have an i3, an i5, and an i7 processor. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be, they're going to have, it's just going to be an array of Xboxes. And they're treating the Xbox like PC. Whereas Sony on the other end is going to be like, the fourth gen, uh, PlayStation 4, and now here's the PlayStation 5, and this is why you got to go buy the PlayStation 5. There are going to be games that are just playable on the PlayStation 5. Maybe they would play also on the PlayStation 4, but maybe they won't. Sony is like that. I could see them cutting off games saying, guys, this is only playable on the PlayStation 5. Whereas Microsoft is committed to this forwards and backwards compatibility where they're going to make sure that their games go on all of the platforms, the S, the, I don't know how long they're going to support the X and the original Xbox with the weak platforms, but they're going to do that. And I, but the thing that I'm saying when, and I see, you know, Karazin and Alish about the, the PlayStation four, the PlayStation five is going to have backwards compatibility. It's, it has to. And the reason why I say it has to is because you have 80 million, who knows when the PlayStation five releases, you'll have over 80 million, 90 million, who knows, and you're going to bring those people all along with you with their collection on the PlayStation 5. The Sony has always had backwards compatibility. They had it with the PlayStation 3 with the with the chip of the they had the process the emotion chip 
in in the PlayStation 3 when it first launched. The PlayStation 2 was fully backwards compatible with the PlayStation 1. The only console that didn't have backwards compatibility is the PlayStation 4. And it's a technical limitation. And however, they did try to address it with PlayStation Now with that Gaikai streaming. They bought Gaikai where the PlayStation 4 launched. They tried to. They tried to do backwards compatibility because the architecture of the PlayStation 3 was Kudaragi's crazy cell processor that was going to save lives. I remember you could run your PlayStation 3 to like run computations and stuff like that. The, the PlayStation 3 architecture was very challenging, and they probably could not do it. Now they're all on 86 objects. They're basically computers off the shelf. They both are. Now, Microsoft was able to do emulation to do that. Now, they've never been too far from emulation because if you remember, the 360 also started with emulation. The biggest games, they handled it the same way because the 360 wasn't native backwards compatible with the Xbox original. The, the PlayStation 3 was. It was native backwards compatible popping a disc. However, the Xbox 360 was not. They used software emulation for the original Xbox. So they kind of use those same kind of methods, and now they're doing it now with the Xbox One, backwards compatibility with the Xbox 360. Now, if Sony and people I know are, are trying to spread saying that the PlayStation 5 won't be backwards compatible, I think it will be backwards compatible. I'm just not sure that they are going to do a PlayStation 5 game that's also playable on a PlayStation 4 where I think Microsoft is going to go that route where they're backward and forward compatible, where the game will just run better on the X2 than it does on the X. Exactly what you're seeing now between the X and the S. I don't, I can't see the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 5 doing that. Now, if they do, because I remember saying this to myself when the 360 was there and the, uh, the next Xbox was talking around and stuff like that. What is that? Oh, Kerosene said the PlayStation 4 library is nuts and all those games will be on the PlayStation 5. Oh, yeah. Like, I definitely think that the PlayStation 5 will be playing the PlayStation 4 games. And I think that's a big reason why the PlayStation has done the remasters like um, have, have done all those remasters. Have they done the Ratchet and Clank? Have they did the uh, Shadow of the Colossus? The whole reason why they did those remasters is not only to sell it again, but also to get it off the PlayStation, to get it off the PlayStation 3. So therefore, by putting them in the PlayStation 4, they ensure that that game will now work with the 86 architecture as they go to the PlayStation 5. That was the uh, my belief as to why they remastered these games, not only to make a buck on them, but also to get them off. They're locked on that PlayStation 3 platform. Let's remaster them. Let's put them in today's time with 4K, and get those games off that PlayStation architecture, get them on the 86 architecture. Not only are they on the PlayStation 4 with the 86 architecture, but they're also up res to 4K. They have trophy support. They, you know, they support the higher resolution TVs. They got the better textures. They got the animations or the, like they modified everything and it's all set to go now for the future. So Shadow of the Colossus will run on the PlayStation 5. Whether it's enhanced and all that other stuff, you know, we'll see about that. But I think, yes, exactly, Karazin. They future proofed them. That's what I that's why they did those remasters, is to get them off the PlayStation 3, is that what I believe. <laughs> so what's up, Kev? How you doing? So that's the thing. Like, I feel that the reason why they did that's to future proof them to get them off the the um the PlayStation 3 for the PlayStation 4 because the anticipation is the PlayStation 5 will have it. Now, the other point that I'm going to go into with the PlayStation 5 that I feel is the other thing that I noticed is being a PlayStation Now subscriber, I know everybody's going to go AWOL, but I'm telling you, I, I kind of like it. I didn't have a PlayStation 2, and I had PlayStation 3 later on. I was able to play a few games on that, but the PlayStation Now, I, I like the service. I think it's good. I've tried the... the um, the NVIDIA one, the streaming is not that bad. It's like my, it's not my primary way to play games, but you know, in the middle of games when there's not much coming out, it's great to jump in there and just start playing some games, Netflix style binge playing. But what I'm noticing with the PlayStation now, and because I'm a subscriber to it, what's up, Prince? How you doing, man? As I'm a subscriber to it, I'm looking and I'm noticing that every month they take the PlayStation 3 games and PlayStation now and give the PlayStation 4 versions of them. Now, I know that the, the speculation came out, I think, from Kotaku that 
they're going to do downloads in probably in September. So it makes sense that they're getting the games off the PlayStation 3 streaming and putting them on PlayStation 4s. Not only that is helpful because you know the PlayStation 4s have the streaming chip in them with share play and streaming directly to you, like all the streaming features and the share features. Probably doing putting the games on PlayStation Now onto PlayStation 4s is probably better than having them run on PlayStation 3s, which really never had the intention of streaming. So that's probably another reason. But also putting those games in the uh, upgrading the PlayStation 3 version of Heavy Rain to the PlayStation 4 version of Heavy Rain, you're streaming. What does it matter? You know, like I don't care if it's the three or the four, but actually the four version would stream better and it had better graphics. So it looks better when you're streaming it. But also, I believe that doing that is so that you could download those games natively to your console, similar to Game Pass. So I think Sony's making a lot of moves to kind of future-proof their games off of the PlayStation 3, at least. They have ported over a couple of PlayStation 2 games, like Twisted Metal Black and stuff like that. But they have, I've noticed that I feel like they're doing that because the PlayStation 5 is going to have backwards compatibility. And if it doesn't, it does leave the window open for Microsoft to kind of make a dent into Sony. And that's the biggest problem that Microsoft had was... All they need to do was support the 360 with the Xbox One, and they didn't. They dropped their pants. They said, screw everybody. You're going to buy an Xbox One. Everything you bought digitally that we kind of led the pathway on, day one digital and all this other stuff with the 360, they abandoned it all and left it on the 360 and started anew with the One. And they gave Sony the window to just jump in there and go, hey, all you people that had 360s, Guess what? Come jump on the PlayStation. You're gonna you, your games don't go with you on the Xbox. Just start a brand new library with us. Now, if history repeats itself and Sony says, "Yo, the PlayStation Five is so powerful, we're not even gonna touch those PlayStation Four games," and Microsoft goes, "Hey, we're backwards compatible and all this other stuff," it does give Microsoft a window to try to make a dent into Sony's thing. Now, at the end of the last generation, both of them were at 80 million or so. And they were going into that. So they weren't as drastic as we are now where Sony's at 80 and Microsoft's at, at 35, 40, whatever the hell they're sitting at. It's like well, two to one. It's been two to one for the last five years. I still think the momentum will go to the PlayStation one just with the, the momentum of, of what's everybody picking up next gen. And that's what goes me to my, my, my point on this is that as an Xbox fan who has been you know, playing on the PlayStation and now really enjoys the PlayStation ecosystem, the games, the exclusives. I pick up now the third party games on the PlayStation and I play my Xbox games on my computer. I am living the, the Phil Spencer dream, I guess, of no matter where I play. Right. And I've said this before, how I've done this. I just can't see if you are an Xbox console fan or owner, how can you be excited for the next Xbox, which technically they... What's up, Bowser? How you doing? Which they technically just released their next-gen console with the X, right? The 4K monster that everybody seems to be forgetting about when we're talking about now the next Xbox, Project Scarlet, which will probably just be a CPU increase, maybe a faster hard drive, and maybe um, a, a little bit higher GPU, but maybe the same GPU and just a higher CPU. Definitely the CPU, because that's the biggest thing that hurts the X. But the problem is they just released a big console. They released their future. And you see how by them not having games specific to the hardware, the console hardware. Now, I'm not even saying specific to the X. I'm saying specific to the console. And this is the thing. This is where I was getting attacked yesterday about this stuff. My point is, I don't lose pleasure in a game because it's on a console and it goes to PC. Because Microsoft's been putting games on PC for that. My problem that I have right now with the console future from Microsoft is that they don't care about the console. It is just a method of delivering a game to you to your TV. The console is not the primary factor in their success. They just released their numbers today. Xbox Live numbers actually are down a couple million. The Xbox Live subscribers, I don't know, down a million or so. 
at 57 million it's dropping which is weird because you know i, I don't know why it's dropping but you got to remember now xbox live is and who knows of how many of those people are paying because they are also counting switch people on minecraft they're counting people who log on their mobile phones on xbox live they're counting all the people who log into pc with xbox with the app so they're counting a lot of people who are not paying for xbox live in that 57 million we don't know how many of them are paid subscribers we don't before we didn't know if they were silver or gold now we don't know if they're free freebies or they're paid people but Microsoft has shifted the whole focus on the console. It is now everywhere. We want everything everywhere. My thing is, is if they're not focusing on console. Yeah, I know. <laughs> okay. Those numbers. Do we trust those numbers? You know what? I don't. I'm just going based on what I see. Trust them or whatever. The thing is, is that they are not building games for the console. Seamus Backley, the creator of the Xbox, had to tell Microsoft, who was embedded, who was a PC company, why they needed a console. And he defines a gaming console as a fixed, static piece of technology that targets game development for uh, not for optimizing and configuring. And this is me paraphrasing what you're saying, but basically a static piece of technology that is a closed environment that developers can target to get the maximum potential of the graphics and capabilities of that machine. It is a locked, closed system of tech, of power that needs to be utilized and developed for. That is why a console exists and a PC, he said, was unlimited power. The PC is is so many variables. And because there's so many variables with PC game development, your game needs to take shortcuts. Your name, your game needs to be adaptable to deal with those different PC configurations. When you're developing for a console, now I'm not a game developer, but this is what he was saying. The reason why the Xbox was created was to compete against Sony, but was to give the developers a closed environment and not deal with all the variables in PC gaming development. And on top of that, a Planet Xbox interview, and I mentioned this yesterday, with the Undead Labs, I know all the chitter-chatter about, oh, Xbox ports it over in a PC, we put it over in a day, we put it over to Xbox. He said it is multi-platform development. When you make a game for console and PC, it's multi-platforms. He says that you make it, you build the weapon in a higher resolution on PC, and then you port it down to the console because the console technically is the weaker part because the PC, he said, is unlimited power. You could do the highest resolution assets, but then you got to tailor them down to put them on the console. And he said that it's a pain because all his line things miss up. You know, if he has a gun and, it, and he has to lower the resolution, the pixels all get shifted. But that is the development that Microsoft is doing. It's PC, Xbox, multi-platform development. That's the business that they're in now, everybody. That's the business that they're in. And Prince Ross says my thing. And that's exactly why care for a console or be excited about the next Xbox when they don't care about the console themselves. Exactly. And the question is the whole reason why they spend exactly what you said. All this research and development on a platform that they really don't care about. And when I when I say like, and when people go, well, what does it matter? What do you mean? Just because they're making the console doesn't mean they're still in the console business. Microsoft is out of the console business. They make games out as a multi-platform. They make them all their own games. The five studios that they bought are multi-platform. They're PC and Xbox day one. And because their own games are being multi-platform, they're going to be sacrifices because they need to do the unlimited power of PC and then the, co the concentrated power of the Xbox, the lower power of the Xbox. So that's where the challenge is with Microsoft's development is because now Microsoft has the... Now, I know they put their games on PC, but they always developed with the console in mind. And I'm going to give you another example of this. If you go back to IGN, Ryan McCaffrey interviewed a developer for Shadowrun. 
If you remember Shadowrun, it was the first Xbox game that was cross-play that worked with PC and Xbox on the 360. Now, he stated, I wanted to make the best shooting game on a console, on the Xbox. Then he said, Phil Spencer and company, Shane Kim, who was Phil Spencer's boss at the time, head of Microsoft Studios, went to him and said, we want that game on PC. Halo dominates the console. We want Shadowrun to be the same type of dominance on PC. And he said, whoa, I didn't want to make a PC game. And, I'll, and I'll, I might put the links in the chat or something like that. I'll put the links from this interview. And it was from IGN. Ryan McCaffrey interviewed him in November 2017 or October 2017. And he basically was saying that I didn't want to make a PC game. He said to Ryan, he's like, I don't want to make one. And then they're like, well, no, we want a game PC. He's like, we want them to make a console game. So they were making the console game. Well, what happened was is to compromise, he goes, Well, what about if we make it crossplay? So we have we want a game like Halo on PC, but they didn't want to put Halo on PC. They wanted Shadowrun to be on PC. So he scrambled with his team and he said that they basically the compromise. He said, We'll make a PC game and make that man, Karazin, you just beat me to my punchline. Basically, we'll make a PC game and an Xbox game and cross-play, and that's the compromise. So we'll have a presence on PC and on Xbox because Shane Kim and Phil Spencer at the time said they wanted that game on PC. And he did not want to just put it on PC. He wanted to have the console. because he, And we all know how did Shadowrun turn out. Exactly. There you go, Karazin. We how did Shadowrun turn out? Because it was split. He had focused on the console, but he had was forced to put it on PC. Now, everybody, every single Microsoft first party game goes through that. Now it has to be multi-platform. It has to be on PC and Xbox day one. Day one is very important because I know when I was on the podcast last night, they were like, well, games go on X on PC and stuff like that. When it's day one. These things need to be developed at the same level, and they got to come out on day one. Therefore, you're splitting your team to focus on two different ports for day one. You're not releasing on console first, and then in four months, you're going to work on the PC build. No, you are building both of them in tandem. So when I sit back and look at Microsoft's future, I'm not excited. Like, I don't give a shit how many teraflops, how many GPU bitches, how much all that shit they put in that friggin' console. They could have a console that looks like a, a, a I don't even know what, it looks like a huge X, like what they wanted to look like. <coughs> it got fucking 30 teraflops. But if nobody is making games for the 30 teraflops and instead they're putting it on PC and just putting it down to work on the next Xbox, why would you wait at midnight and go buy 500, 400, or I'd probably six, who the hell knows what it is, of the Xbox X2? Why? Especially, how stupid would it be if they have an Xbox X2 launch lineup that works day and date on PC? You don't have to leave your fucking house. You could download the Xbox first party lineup right on my computer at midnight. And you're going to have people lined up outside. They have no goddamn clue what's going on. It's just because they're diehard Xbox or they just believe in one brand and going to wait. And they're going to be so foolish because you can play those games anywhere. Who the hell knows what the... Who knows? Maybe Game Pass is on the Switch. You could play Midnight on the Switch Game Pass. And you got people lined up waiting for the X2. That's the that's the craziness that Microsoft has put us in for the generation. I don't give a shit what the next Xbox has. Who you want to know what? Let me tell you something about the X. So let's see the Hovis method, right? The the chamber liquid chamber cooling. The Direct X twelve was baked, fucking baked on the chip. But PUBG runs at seventeen frames per second. Is that DirectX 12 baked on a chip? Fuck it in preview. Is that DirectX 12 on a chip? Is that the Hovis method working its magic? 
Is that Aaron Greenberg jumping out of his car, running down the, the alleyway of fucking uh, the Microsoft store like he just won the Super Bowl? That, that must be all the power of the X. You want to know why? Because the game is not made for the console. Their games are not made. Why the hell does State of Decay 2 run better on the PC and the Xbox One X was a fucking garbage when it launched with bugs and glitches and frame rates that were lower? The Xbox One S, the shit, the S, the S, that one, that one ran the game at 40 frames per second. The Xbox One X, the Xbox One X, Ran it at 29, 27, 30. Oh, because it's running at a higher resolution. Oh, yeah, that Hovis method must be fucking working real good. That that DirectX 12 is baked on that chip. The liquid chamber cooling was there. Yeah, it's all there. The power, the power. That's your first party now for party student. And I gotta make three versions: the S, the X, and the PC. I only got all the UHD exclusives. That's right. <laughs> they don't have those anymore because now the UHD movies, 4K, like Netflix has some of those 4K movies now. They they're losing exclusives to Netflix. But that's the problem they have. And now I'm going to jump on the other side, on the PlayStation side, and I'm going to tell you, Mark Cerny comes out with his sexy time voice. And he's like, yeah, yeah, you're going to do the 4K checkerboard. We're going to do 4K. It, 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 we don't want to do too much power, not too much power. We keep the price low. We keep the price low, and we're going to do 4K checkerboarding. Well, guess what? All their games are using 4K checkerboarding. All right? All their games. Spider-Man, Horizon, God of War. Did you... Digital Foundry is fucking jizzing all over the place with the like the technical aspect. And you want to know what? They have nothing to fucking compare it to. They have nothing to compare it to because you only can play it. Holy shit, I hit something. You only can play it on one console. There's no side-by-sides. There's no PC comparisons. No. There is God of War and the fucking PlayStation. There you go. Where's your side-by-side? -side? There is no side-by-side. -side. But for the Xbox, we got fucking four side-by-sides. We got an S, an X, a PC, a power PC. Because Microsoft puts their shit everywhere. They're going to be comparisons. But, but Digital Foundry just takes Detroit Become Human and going... Oh my God. And know what the special, the crazy thing is? Is that the game looks great on the slim. They're not talking about the S, where the S is like the abandoned child of, on the side, where the S is like the worst place to play. So when Microsoft says Xbox is the best place to play, no, you mean the Xbox X is the better place to play and the S is the worst. The S is the worst. All right? So the S is the worst place to play. But when you look at God of War, I played God of War on the PlayStation 4 Slim on a 4K TV, and it looked great. It looked great. It wasn't looking all fuzzy and shit like I played Ghost Recon on the S. That was all fuzzy and shit that I had. I went. This is the why I get so pissed is because I played that game. I bought one of those fucking Yogi Bo beach those fucking beanbag chairs to sit further away from my TV because I thought I was too close to it. No, it was the trash fucking resolution of that Xbox One S. That's what it was. Cost me $300 on a fucking beanbag chair because I thought I was too close to my TV. Then I go get a gaming PC and I'm sitting, I could lick my screen and I can still see how clear it is. That S, the power of that thing was trash. That Xbox S was a slap in the face and a kick in the nuts. And then they come by and go, $500. Oops, we made a mistake. Now pay $500 and this is what we promised. And then they fucking give you trash like PUBG. 
Those fucking guys released a new car in PUBG. The game runs at fucking 17 frames a second with buildings popping up as you're landing. Are they, do they think we're fucking fools? And they're going to bring that shit to the future? Oh, yay, they won Prime Day. They won Prime Day. They're the only fucking console on sale. They, nobody else was on sale. You know? Like, it, the thing is, is that they are multi-platform. They don't give a shit about the console. They don't give a shit about it. But everybody seems to give a shit about it because they're hoping. They're hoping that Microsoft is just going to come back. They bought five studios, all right? I'm going to give you four studios that they had, that they worked with. Remedy fucking left them. Scalebound. Platinum's doing good. Crackdown 3. Do we need to say any more about Crackdown 3 and its fucking rotisserie of console developers that Davy Jones announced the game and then he left? And then he went to Epic. They took his fucking class. We don't need to talk about Crackdown 3. That game is that game is done. Stay in the K2. Buggy as hell. Five years in the making. Five years in the making. And we bought him. Hey, good job, Microsoft. We bought him. Five years in the making. Comes out with bugs and shit. Sea of Thieves. Rare. Oh, my God. Remember when Microsoft bought Rare? Oh, my God. Nintendo people. I, oh. Shit. And what did they do with them? Grabbed by the ghoulies was game one. Then they came out with Cameo and Perfect Doc. Oh shit. And then they made avatars. And then they played with the camera. And who the hell knows what happened to them? And then they come out with Sea of Thieves. Another game, four or five years in the making. But everybody, whoa, whoa, whoa. A 68 on Metacritic because the content wasn't there. You could get on a ship, but you're sailing nowhere and doing nothing. Fetch quests. Oh, but it's coming. And now uh, here, July 31st, there's another ghost ship is going to fly around. Maybe it's a skeleton now. It's a fucking ghost because all they fight is skeletons and they got a shark in the water. And tentacles that pop up. Some sea dicks. The sea dicks are still there. And now we got a ghost ship. Oh, wow. State of the K dropped 66. That's wonderful. That's what I mean. So let's talk about, and what's the common factor in all those games? And, all, uh, and wait, we're gonna go, I'm going to go deep now when we go into Halo. 62, really? State of the K is 62? It dropped? Fucking good. No. And they're not re-reviewing State of the K. Uh, see at these either. With all their DLC stuff. That game is a service bullshit. But... You got you looking at this, and now they got four studios, five studios. What is the common factor? <laughs> what is the common factor in in all those game developments? The big M, Microsoft. How they handle their studios, how they handle their games. They try to put too much of Microsoft into Xbox, and now they are one right now. And my whole issue with this whole play anywhere, multi-con platform development is like, I did not want the games to suffer, right? And what are we seeing? All the games that Xbox releases are suffering because Microsoft is throwing shit against the wall to see what sticks. They're talking AI, they're talking cloud, they're talking be everywhere, 2 million gamers, 2 billion gamers when you can't even sell over 35 million fucking consoles, you're going to touch 2 billion people? What are you doing, fucking hand me outs? 2 billion gamers. Sell the fucking console first and then worry about touching 2 billion people. But they talk all the bullshit and that's what happened to me. I changed. I bought all that bullshit. I believed in it. That general, I'm like, no, they can't fuck up. They can't. This is my, like, you know, they know how to fix stuff. They'll fix it. And then I start seeing the games I'm playing, and I'm like, oh, Gears 4 wasn't all that. Halo 5 I liked, but Gears 4 wasn't all that. Quantum Break, I'm like, ooh, that's not too bad. 
Rico, I didn't even buy. I'm like, oh, shit, what the hell is this shit? And that was the year when my head started changing. I'm like, wait a second. All this hype and all this bullshit, these games are not that great. What's going on? And then I started looking and I saw Horizon. And, so, and I waited to that E3 for the X because they told me to wait for the X. I waited. And they stayed didn't learn their lesson. Phil Spencer took his shirt out there and announced another $500 console. So he has the balls to go out there and announce 500. So guess what? Your next Xbox is going to be five at least $500. Sony has yet to go on stage ever since they got laughed off the stage with go get a job at $600 PlayStation 3. Sony has yet to come on stage and say $500. Even with the Pro, $400. So I'm of the, the belief that the next generation PlayStation 5 is going to be $400. When Microsoft's next generation console is going to be $500. Because Phil went out there twice. He got left off the stage once, didn't learn his lesson, and went out there and said, now I got another $500 console. Now, if Sony comes out with $500, then we're there, we're there. But Sony has yet to come back on stage ever since the PlayStation 3 and talk $500. Even with the VR, I know it was a $500 bundle, but they had a lower version of it. So it wasn't starting at $500. So Microsoft has one on stage twice to say $500. So I guarantee the next console is $500. PlayStation, we got to see. And that's another factor in next generation. But the thing is, is that how do you get excited for them releasing another it's quote unquote, maybe $500 console when they don't even give a shit if you play on it. And what I just ranted about was you have a game that's built for the console, all right? So the checkerboarding, the, the, the power, of, they're maximizing the power. Just go look at how the original 360 and how it's looked in the beginning, Gears 1, as opposed to Gears 3. You know, Gears 1 had restrictions. Gears 3 was a lot more open with the Brumac fight and stuff. Like, the, the technology didn't change. They just learned how to work with the console because it's a fixed environment. And Microsoft doesn't believe in that. They're going to make PC games and port them over to your console. That's your Xbox future. And then eventually, they're just going to stream them to you. So you can play them on the console, probably download them natively on the console, or you can go play them on your fucking phone. Because Phil don't care. They don't care. My Xbox gaming has turned into a side project. It's a side project for them. The gaming is a side project. Yeah, Year of the Scorpio. Remember that? That was the first tweet of last year. And they'll say Xbox is successful. And I'm not saying that it is failing monetarily. And Microsoft is poor. And they're going to... No. I'm not saying that. And actually, I wish they were poor. I wish they were losing money. Because sitting here right now, looking at that Xbox lineup and looking what they gave us, I want those bitches to be poor as hell. Because the fact that they're raking in money, giving us another year of Forza, that's two holidays of just Forza. Fuck, last year was better because at least they gave us a Lucky Tail cartoon good friggin' game. This year, it's just Forza. Enjoy. Two years without new IP. For the holiday. Microsoft lived and died by the holiday. Now they go into the holiday with Forza. And their new IP, Sea of Thieves, bombed on reviews. I want to know what those engagement numbers are now. It's just the last remaining pirates. And people will jump on for the pirate cruise ship, jump on a play probably for a few days, do their little mission, and jump off. Just like everybody jumped on Sea of Thieves to play the Megalodon for two days, and then they jumped off, and that was it. Yes. And I did see that. And Spider-Man. You don't even want to go there. Like, that, that freaking game is going to be... That game looks incredible. 
and we have hunger for a Spider-Man game. But my problem is just that the Microsoft's mentality of the of how they're, they're planning their studios on the decisions that they're making, Dave and Buster's Halo, Miami Heat friggin' mobile game, Gears Tactics being exclusive to PC. Where are these decisions coming from? And my, shout out to Frogs. He actually saw the Halo game over at Dave and Buster's. He says that that is a VR game. He's like, that is a game that was made for VR, and they just put it over to a light gun game and put it in the arcade. But that game looked like it was supposed to be a VR game. He's like, it is. It's an on-rails VR game. And remember, Microsoft was all talking VR when the when Project Scorpio was announced, right? And then they pulled back from that. No VR. We're not doing it. And all they're going to do is... All these other guys are going to make better and better VR. And two years from now, three years from now, VR is going to be around. And Microsoft's going to be, oh, uh, just like they did with Windows Phone. Oh, whoa. Oops, we don't have a Windows Phone. Here's Windows Phone. And they got 3% of the market. And VR is going to be established. Now, it's not going to take over gaming, but it's going to be around. And it's going to get better and better. And Microsoft is going to be just sitting back waiting. And they're not going to have a gaming answer to it. And then they're going to try to jump on when everybody else already has developers in their pocket. You know, Sony just having the hardware out there is actually getting developers to, to be in there. You know, they, they're part of the Sony thing. With Microsoft just sitting back and not giving a game solution for it, they're not in the market. Then that's exactly what happened with Windows Phone. Apple and Google took over and then Microsoft gave their phone and they couldn't get a developer to make a fucking app. They, they will start paying people to make apps. And this is the same reason why we're seeing what we're seeing. Microsoft is not getting the developer mind share. You want to know why? It's because they don't care about the consumer product that they're trying to sell. Sales do matter, everybody. And the reason why sales matter is because you got to get your product out there to know to have the developers have a targeted audience to know, to reach out to. When you're sitting there and I'm making a game and it's going to cost you a million dollars to make the game, you want to make profit on it. What system are you going to build it on? You're going to do multi-platform saying, well, Microsoft does PC and Xbox. Xbox is sitting there at $35 million, but I don't feel comfortable making uh, – our game is better with a controller. I don't want to make it on PC. And they're looking at $30 million Xbox and they're looking at $80 million PlayStations. You're losing, you're selling your house and $1 million to make this game. Where are you most profitable? Where are you going to see the most success? Sales matter. It's for developer mind share. And that's why Play Anywhere, nobody's been using Play Anywhere. You know, I know why? Because nobody wants to develop for the Xbox because it's a low install base. So what they're doing is trying to combine the Xbox install base with their PC install base to make their numbers enticing, just like they're increasing their Xbox Live numbers by throwing with Switch uh, Minecraft users and phone users to make those numbers look big to attract developers. Developers are the lifeblood of these companies. The developer mindshare. Microsoft was shitty to developers at first. They got better to them. But Microsoft... Is not doesn't have the install base. They're not being aggressive in the console market because some developers don't want to make games for PC. That is such a competitive environment. There are so many games. And know what else, too? PC games are cheap to buy. That's why PC gaming is so awesome because you can buy games for like four bucks and three bucks. Why are those games priced like that? Because there's so many of them, you got to stand out. They bottom dollar the same way as the App Store on the Apple. You have so many apps. You got to be 99 cents of free even to, to, to put on the lights. So people don't want to develop for PC. They want to develop for a console. And when they look at the consoles, you look at the consoles, you see one selling at half the rate of the other one. That's why Microsoft needs to be aggressive in the console space. They can't just put their hands up going, I don't give a fuck where you play. Well, I don't give a fuck about your console then. Because if you don't care about selling that console and making sure it's competitive and getting it out there and making sure that you're beating the competition or at least coming close to it, 
then you're not going to get to develop a mind share. And those numbers are not going to change. And they haven't changed. And that X had to be aggressively priced. So Microsoft going into next generation with this mentality of, I don't give a shit where you play. I don't know how that sells a console to me or to anybody that really hears that message. That's where when, and then Sony drops the PlayStation five and it's like, you want to play here. Look at these games. These games were built from the ground up. God of War plus, 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 plus. Like a game that looks like God of War, even better looking. I, I don't even know how, but making games for the PlayStation 5. Now, maybe if they show a trailer and those games are not at there at launch, but people are going to be good with their PlayStation 4. But Mike, Sony knows that they're going to make a game that says only playable on PlayStation 5. Microsoft has to do the same. And if they do, then they're gonna they they're gonna have to, I don't know how they're gonna do it, but they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna have to make games exclusively for the next console. But I just see the failure of the X and their lack of support for making a game to utilize the power of the X. And I know they weren't going to like this X. Really, I'm so glad I didn't fall for the X because I knew it was a stopgap. Because I knew that this console was was going to be, it wasn't going to be maximized. They were going to try to twinkle, like, gleam our eyes with, with specs. But those specs really don't amount to anything because nobody's really using them. It's brute forcing everything, which shows why some of the performance issues are on the X. Is because, the, like, the lower frame, it's because it's just brute forcing it. It's, just, it's not optimized for the power of of that x the what is it the 4k bus speeds and all this other bullshit it, it's just brute forcing it it's like you know it's like hey just jam on the accelerator and see what we get but those games are not being built from the ground up for the x now i hope with the xbox next one they do that because sony's gonna do it and if microsoft doesn't do that and they just want to be it's gonna be just like an i7 as opposed to an i3 like processor talk then it's not going to work. And there's not going to be a huge influx of people to buy those games. So that's why I'm thinking, you know, going into the Halo and Gears, you know, again, we're back to Halo and Gears, but they're going to be using those games as probably transition games or launch games for their next console. And I think Halo Infinite is going to launch with the next console. I think that that is definitely the move. They haven't launched with a Halo game since the first console, and I think that is going to be big. And that could be something definitely that gets you to buy an X too. But Microsoft put themselves in the position and they already have it on Halo Infinite. It is on PC day and D. So are you going to wait out and go get that console when you can run it on a computer? And the thing is, if people go, oh my God, I don't have enough money to buy a rig and all this other stuff. Well, you want to know what? What you get for computers now, the integrated graphics cards, you could kind of start running these games. And a year or two from now, the graphics cards we got now are going to be cheaper. PC gaming is going to be more accessible. Like you're going to have access to more powerful computers as the years go on. So these games that you're getting now will be able to run on these computers. So you don't have to build a $2,000 rig every single time somebody says PC gaming. I got a thousand dollar laptop. All right. And it has a graphics card in it and it runs games. Now I do have it hooked up to my graphics amplifier to boost it up to play 4K games, but it's capable of playing games right now. And these gaming PCs are getting even cheaper and cheaper. 1200, 1100. They're decent. And it's a computer. A computer does a lot more stuff than play games. You do this. I'm talking on the chat and the thing. I do videos and do this. Like, it's an investment. It's a computer. It's not a gaming machine. So, you know, when people say PC gaming, oh, my God, no, it's a computer, okay? So you could do a lot more things with a computer than just play games on it. So it, it's it, PC gaming is definitely more accessible than it has been because I would never get into it before. But Microsoft does make it easy. That Windows 10 store is trash as hell. But when you get the game downloaded, it works. But the one thing I want to get, so I'm going to wrap up the, the, the console future as 
Microsoft really needs to show their interest in the console space and not making this kumbaya, we want to be everywhere. Because if they're talking that shit and they go put another $500 console on store shelves, the X2, it's going to sit there and get dust. And the only people going to buy it are the loyal people that still have hope. And if Sony comes out with a PlayStation 5 and going, boom, look at this game, only playable here. And people are going to go buy it. And the last point I want to make is look at where we at. This is the this is the other issue that I have. When Sony was ending the PlayStation 3, it was coming out with Last of Us. They carried that momentum in there. So people knew they had they were making some good investment in first party games at the end of their generation. And they were playable. Hint, playable. Last of Us released. It wasn't a studio. It was a game that came out. Microsoft, on the other hand, kind of fizzled out on folks in more connect and then went entertainment route. But Sony had the game. So they kind of got the fan loyalty back in the fact that they could deliver some games and they invested in some games. Microsoft now ending this generation is probably going to end with Halo, with Gears 5. Maybe Halo Infinite, probably Halo Infinite, but like their recent track record of games has shown that they have struggled with the games not rating that very well and not like, you know, they, they sold because people were hungry for games, but and not having true exclusives to their brand kind of make them like a wash as we end this generation and go into the next one. They're not really going in. <laughs> they're not really going in like the next generation rolling in. They're kind of falling back in the next generation where Sony is just delivering these frigging games. And everybody's like, oh my God, give me the sequel, next generation, Horizon 2, the next God of War, the next, you know, whatever David Cage decides to make. Like these, the next Spider-Man 2, like people are going to buy your console just with the promise that those games are coming. Where Halo and Gears Ugh. Like I, I, Gears 4 really disappointed me. And I'm going to get into that right now. And I don't want to keep to I've been talking too long, man. I, I need a timer or some bullshit on this thing. But Halo and Gears. Gears 5 look great. All right? Gears 5 look great. And I see what time did I talk about this? Well, I don't know. Gears 5 looked really good. In the aftermath of Halo 5, though, Halo 5, I really didn't have a, a big problem with it. But it was a little disappointing that we waited for Halo 5 and you didn't get and they introduced Locke. They gave him a movie. You played with him and his team and all this other stuff. And you played Halo, you played Master Chief for like five. And they were supposed to be chasing each other and whatever. The end of the game, all the meet together in like four, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but they all meet together, right? Now, in the aftermath of Halo 5, people like bullshit, like 343 is coming out going, yo, you'll play a Master Chief from now on. We made a mistake, blah, blah, blah. They made a mistake. It's all about Master Chief and his story. Now, they show Halo Infinite. Halo Infinite is not Halo 6. It's the next story. And they got rid of the name. They got rid of the numbers. It is the next version. It happens after Halo 5, but it's called Halo Infinite. And it's Master Chief Saga. You're going to play as Master Chief. It's his saga after the events of Halo 5. Well, I want to know what the hell happened to all those other people that you just built up. But they're making a point that this is bigger, bolder, and all this other stuff. Right? Halo Infinite, and I was trying to explain this yesterday. I was getting uh, attacked. It's going to be a platform. Matt Booty is created Minecraft. Every time Phil has a microphone in his mouth, he talks about a service game and Minecraft, 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 Minecraft. Matt Booty owned the Minecraft, 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 and now Matt Booty owns game studios. He runs the studios. Minecraft, 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 Minecraft. Halo Infinite is going to be a platform. It is going to be a world that Microsoft could inject content in. Just look at Sea of Thieves. My problem is Halo Games as a service. 
Don't give me Master Chief Chapter 1 in July and tell me I got to wait for Master Chief Chapter 2 in August and Chapter 3 is coming in September and then Chapter 4 comes in December. Oh, and the finale comes next March. Don't you break up that game and make the game for the service. Because if it was just Halo Wham Bam 6, I wouldn't have these concerns. But the fact that it's Halo Infinite and all I hear is Minecraft and I see this big world on a Halo ring and all this other stuff, I don't want Microsoft to make games for the service. Just make great games. That has always been my fucking point. Just make a fucking game and the gamers will come. End the story. Fuck the service. Fuck, don't make a game. Don't turn your first-party studios into fucking mobile fucking uh, Lucky 7 games. Don't make you, don't piecemeal your games. Because guess what, everybody? That was the excuse we got for Sea of Thieves. Game fucking trash, there's no content. Oh, but it's a service game. Fuck you and your service. PUBG, it's a preview game. They turned a broken-ass PUBG game into a service because they're fucking fixing it with updates. You're supposed to be excited for update 15 because they might fucking fix the frame rate. That's not a service game. Now, whatever Ubisoft does service games, you give me a full game on day one, you give me a big game, and then you keep adding content to it as a bonus and keep me engaged, that's something else. But don't give me bare bones, Sea of Thieves, and then say, well, we have three teams making extra content. It's going to come out every other month. And don't do that to Halo. Don't give me Master Chief with a fucking battle rifle and one map and think that I'm going to subscribe to your service for the next fucking six months to get the rest of the bullshit. And I see Microsoft's gaming development focus is this service bullshit. We got that Matt Booty ass talking. It's uh, it's really difficult for anybody to think about a large-scale AAA game these days without having in mind a content and service plan that goes one to two years in the future out of the gate. End quote. We remember that quote. Who was it from? Fucking from it was when he opened up his ass mouth right before E3. Talking about like, oh, single player games are not that great. We care about single-player games, but we do with these service games. My whole point is if just look at God, you make a great game, the people will come. I don't understand why it's so challenging as an as, as speaking to Xbox fans and just speaking as an Xbox fan. Just make a great game. I don't give a fuck about Cloud. Fuck DirectX 12. Fuck the studios. Fuck you buying studios. Just make a fucking game that's good. Why is that so hard? Why do we need to talk a month and a half about why Sea of Thieves doesn't have content in it? Why do I got to talk about a month and a half why State of K2 is still has bugs in it? Just make a great game. And I'm sorry, Forza Horizon is a great game. Forza Horizon 3 was a surprise. But I'm telling you now, Forza Horizon 4 is not much more than Forza Horizon 3. They didn't add motorcycles. They should have expanded it. Instead, they gave they, they added mission types, and they made it an MMO structure. Hence, a game as a service. Forza Horizon 3 was an open-world game. You were able to play with av the driver ties, but then you could go online and just free roam, right? Then you could go and join races with people. This game is an MMO. This game now, you go online, and there are going to be events that you got to race to. Like, it is a living MMO world with every season changing every week. The season, which I think is kind of stupid because... You know, you're going to slide around like like if you don't like wintertime, if there's like, oh, I'm sliding all over the place. My car is not good for wintertime and blah, blah. That's a whole week that you're going to deal with that bullshit. Which is kind of weird. Like, I, I think it's cool, but it, it, I, don't, I don't know. Like, I don't I, I think you should have been able to join servers that had different different. 
Yeah, it is an always online game. And actually, Forza Horizon 4, you can play offline, though. You can. You could turn off, and then the driver tiles will just come. But the structure of the game is an MMO. Again, they took Forza Horizon 3, and they basically turned it into an MMO. It's going to have, like, a, a, an event, like Destiny. Like, oh, there's an event here, so you have to drive over there and do the event, to do the race, the timed event. So they're going to have much more kind of MMO, always online structure to Forza. Because they got to keep you subscribing to Game Pass, right? You know? And, yeah, I know GTA does, like, the snowball fight and stuff like that. But this is racing, though. So it has to do a lot with traction and stuff like that. So if you have a bunch of race cars, then maybe you didn't really upgrade your four-wheel drive. I don't know. I'm just saying with four-wheel drive. And you and now the week is winter, and you're sliding all over the place, and it's not fun. Like, it sucks because that you can't change that you can't play it for the week because next month, next week they'll change the season on you. I think they should have did it every other day with the season rather than a week, but I don't know. I just think that it's a, it, it, it could lead to frustration, but again, Forza Horizon is a great game, but again, they really didn't expand it too much as I thought they would have like added more like, like I, I've been playing the crew two a lot. I'm not saying the crew two is better than the Forza, but I do like the crew two, but you know, have fun with it. It's the fun version of Forza. Throw in some motorcycles for the first time. Why don't you throw in, uh, you know, like some other like other type cars, like maybe F1 cars. I don't know if they don't. Like, I just mean like have a little fun with it. Make it a little fantastical or something like that. Like, I just thought that they could have done a little bit more. We'll see. I think the missions are kind of cool. Like the pizza delivery or you own a house and stuff like that. We'll see how it goes, but. Again, a lot of it is online, and I'm not going to trash on Forza because Forza is a great – Forza Horizon I really like, and Forza Horizon 3 was good. But Forza Horizon looks great, but it's not – you know, it's it's in Europe, and, and, you know, there is Europe in there. But, again, it's not the um, – yeah, the vehicle switch is really cool. That is really cool. I do like the vehicle and crew, too. But Forza Horizon 4, I, I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait to see it. I want to see how these seasons work. Um and, you know, we'll see how it is. But my whole point was, like, just make a great game. And Forza Horizon will probably be a great game. It'll probably be the best they got. But, again, it's Forza. They've been doing it annually every other year. I just don't understand why Microsoft just has trouble making a great game. Like, and going into the Gears 5 thing. So, in the aftermath of Halo, right, nobody wanted to play as Locke. They want to play as Master Chief. So, now you go out and do Gears 5 and say, it's Kate's story. Kate is the main protagonist. Per Rod Ferguson at the end uh, E3 interview this year on Inside Xbox, he says Kate is the main protagonist. And that little thing that you do on the on the river on the lake, it's I think it's gonna be more of a structure like um, God of War, how it is with the hubs, with the you have the hub world and then you have the different realms. I think Gears Five is gonna be structured a little bit like that, where you have like your hub world and then you go do your realms and stuff, or you do your your missions and stuff, but. Kate's story, though. And Kate is traveling with some random grunt number four. Like, I don't know who that guy was. Gears of War is Marcus Phoenix. And they brought in JD, his son, in Gears 4. Right? That JD couldn't even carry Gears 4. The Marcus came in in Act 2. And you play with Marcus for the entire game, except when he gets eaten. And then you gotta go chase him and find your dad. So... They even had Marcus Phoenix presence the entire game of Gears 4, right? Now, what are you telling me in Gears 5, Marcus and JD go do their own thing, and I take Kate and, and random guy number four, and we go to the north and go find out why Kate story? My, my concern with Gears 5 is that I don't want to play that game, and everybody go, well, it's a great Gears of War. It's a great game. You know, like, it's cool enemies and things like that but it doesn't feel like it's not a gears of war game because marcus and jay the, the 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 iconic characters are not there it's it's like a spin-off and you don't want it's just like you just came off of halo 5 and the criticism you're getting where you're apologizing for saying yes master chief is the most important thing and now you take gears 5 and you're kind of doing the same thing you're now saying kate is the main protagonist 
if that was so, then why didn't we get expansion this year or last year on Gears 4, Gears 4, colon, Kate's Adventure, just to lead us into Gears 5? Why didn't we get Halo 5, Locks Tale? You know, and that's the thing where I'm sitting there, and I've said this even last year when there was no games. Why haven't we got expansions? Like, hell, they had the Horizon expansion. They had the Uncharted Lost Legacy expansion. Like, what's going on with the studios that they can't pump? They, they're called the fucking Coalition. They just make Gears of War. They're called 343. They just make fucking Halo. <clears throat> How are they not pumping out content? How are they not coming out with an expansion to expand Locke's story? Get me interested in them. Don't make a fucking movie. Make a game with them. While I wait for Master Chief and find out what happens. You want to develop Kate and know about her history. Gears of War 4, Kate's Adventures. Here I come. This year, 40 bucks. Thank you. I can't wait for Gears 5 Beta. Maybe Gears 5 Beta Online. Like It doesn't take a genius to think of this. So Microsoft is doing something with their studios that they, they, I'm not even talking spinoffs. I'm just talking about expansions to the franchises that they already have established. We didn't even get that. And we're getting just a Forza, another year of Forza. And those two trash games they released in the spring. And guess what we're seeing at Gamescom? Guess what? Microsoft announced what we're saying. We're seeing State of K2. We're going to see Sea of Thieves. I'm going to see PUBG. It's like, do you just got three fucking games? Is that it? Oh, and they'll probably show Forza. Probably. But like, PUBG, really? What? Do we, what? <laughs> what? And a bowl full of controllers. That's right. Oh, and there is going to be a new controller announcement and a new bundle. I swear, if that bundle includes PUBG, I'm putting my fist through the TV. It's probably going to be a Sea of Thieves bundle, maybe, to show the new content. Hell, maybe they'll have a custom con a custom console, like the Spider-Man one. That looks absolutely amazing. Uh, whenever that comes out, September? Yeah, MPD, yeah, whatever. That thing's flying off the shelves. Comic book collectors, uh, people are going to buy that like crazy. That Spider-Man fucking console. That thing looks... That control looks awesome, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess that's what happened. But, you know, it's just... The thing that goes on is just... I, I feel like with Gears 5, I'm concerned that they're doing the same thing that they're, they're apologizing right now for Halo 5. And the thing with Halo 5, and like I said, you know, they were saying yesterday about like, oh, Halo's always been a service game, like a multiplayer. Yeah, multiplayer map packs. You know what? Like, Gears 5, Halo 5 was kind of weird because a lot of their map packs that they came out with were a lot of created by the, like, with the Forge mode. Like, a lot of them were Forge maps. Every time I played, I was always in a map created by somebody. Whether they approved it or not, it was using Forge assets. It wasn't like a built from the ground up, man. In Halo 3, they used to have trailers for each of the like, oh, and then we put weapons here and this trail. Like they would, they would all they would go through each map pack like crazy. Gears 5, they kind of just said, ah, one one map that we made, and then five from everybody else that they made. They made the community drive it. So Halo has always been a platform. But my thing is, is with Infinite, it's going to be. I I know, man, because that's a, is it going to be a light story? I'm going to tell you right now, no matter what Halo Infinite turns out to be, it is not going to be the traditional Halo. Here's my single player. Here's my multiplayer. It's going to be some sort of merge of the two of them. It's not going to is going to be a campaign, maybe tied in with some multi. It's going to be something weird, because if it was just a regular, they wouldn't just drop the six like they made halo one two and three right halo odst halo reach right okay now we had halo and what was the quote for halo three right finish the fight they built up the trilogy to finish the fight in halo three right now we had halo four with the prometheans we killed that guy that was weak i did not like Halo four halo five 
Cortana went fucking AWOL. So Halo 6 should be finish the fight and fucking fight Cortana. Like, it's a go. We're going to fight the Guardians. Like, it's it finished the fight. Instead, it's like Halo 4, Halo 5, Cortana gone AWOL. She resurrected as the devil. Halo's Halo Infinite? Master Chief Saga, a huge, open, ambitious thing for Master Chief's focus after the events of Halo 5. I don't know. That doesn't sound like finish the fight. Let's go fuck up some Guardians and tell her to slap Cortana some sense into her. And also, Aaron Greenberg states, and that's what I read yesterday, and this is from the Polygon article, he states that He said, oh, actually, I didn't read this part. When asked whether Halo Infinite would be a games-as-a-service title, effectively meaning a long-running title supported by regular updates, Greenberg said, the world has changed. We look at Fallout. Sea of Thieves. You know, gamers want to be able to access to stuff earlier. It's becoming more of a service-based industry and digital-first business. And so, because of that, we're definitely thinking about Halo that way. Holy shit, everybody. We just had a revelation on Grinds My Gears. I don't know what fucking episode this is. Episode 23. I did not read that article further. I could have really scared them last night on playing Xbox. <laughs> I stopped at the first picture. But the, the next paragraph answered it. I'll put the link. Uh, I don't know if I, I could probably put the link in chat. Just for you guys. But we just all had a revelation right here. So Halo is going to be a games as a service. It is. And here we go. I think I can do it. There we go. There's the... Uh... Oh, wow. I, I, I didn't even choose that. I was just reading down the article and I saw that one. So, yeah. It's a games as a service. And look, I just ranted and, and bashed my desk because I don't want Sea of Thieves structure. There we go. They look at Fallout and Sea of Thieves. So, infinite amount of content. You just got to wait for it. <laughs> Pretty much. I think that's what's going to be. Infinite amount of content. It's, you just got to wait. Just like Sea of Thieves. So, I know. Thank you, man. We just had the revelation. So, everything that I said yesterday has come to fruition today in the same article. So, for anybody out there that goes, no, 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 traditional Halo, tradi guys, it's done. We thought Gears of War was going to be, that's a console game. They released that game day and date with a PC. They don't give a flying fuck. Okay? So, it all leads into all that shit. Halo, there you go. I don't even want, I got to read more of this article because I'm just like, and they're still fixing Master Chief Collection. Yeah, keep fixing it. Yeah, and Infinite gave it away. And like I said, just like I said before, Halo is not like, it doesn't sound like, let's finish the fight. Let's go get Cortana. No, it sounds like a, a reason why I brought up that article was because, exactly. And that's what I said Minecraft, Minecraft, Minecraft. Booty is Minecraft. Phil all talks about Minecraft. The Satya talks about Minecraft. They want that Minecraft money. Halo is going to be, and I'm going to tweet this out, that article little thing, it's a service. And if people want to say, oh, but Halo 5 was games as a service, oh, no, 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 no. He actually said Fallout, and he said Sea of Thieves, which, holy shit, he better not be putting Sea of Thieves and Halo in the same sentence. And he did. So, oh, my goodness. We just got to wait. We just got to wait because the truth lies in the future when they release it. And I said this, Microsoft, exactly. Savage Yoga, exactly. Just make a good game. I don't give a shit about times are changing and this is changing because guess what? If times were changing, then God of War would still be on shelves and nobody buying it. All right? If times are changing, nobody will be excited for Spider-Man. Because they're just games. They don't got some Microsoft corporate bullshit tied into it. 
Oh, th- why do you think Crackdown is delayed? You think Crackdown is a hard game to make? It's because they're trying to put the cloud bullshit into it. They're trying to put more Microsoft bullshit into that. And you want to know why? Do you want to know why? Do you want to know why games is a service? Do you want to know why games and Game Pass day one? You want to know why? Is because they want to lead by example so that other developers will use their shit and they will get royalties on that shit. That is why. That is why. They want to use Crackdown to show that cloud processing works so that some developers sitting in a garage somewhere goes, whom I want to work on Microsoft and the Azure cloud. That worked in Crackdown. They wanted to inspire developers to use their services, and they're sacrificing the quality and making us wait for games because they want to use it as an advertisement to encourage developers to use Microsoft's shit. That is the story, everybody. That is the story. They sacrificed what it meant to be a console exclusive game just to show Play Anywhere. How many developers have jumped on Play Anywhere, everybody? Oh, no. I I don't know. Two games we got Shadow of War, Shadow of War, and uh, and Resident Evil. Oh, I think I think Capcom did uh, um, the uh, Marvel versus Capcom. I think that one came to play anywhere. But but that's it. Dell Elbers are not doing this. Streaming. Games launching day and date. Showing successful numbers. Oh, look. We're selling so many more. And games as a service work. Yeah. Because they want somebody to put their game on there. No third parties doing it. EA's doing their own thing. Ubisoft has their own store. Steam has their own thing. Everybody got their own thing. Microsoft, nobody's going to jump on you. That's why they're trying to get early developers before they go in bed with other publishers. Because EA has their own store. They got Origin. They're not doing bad. They're not doing cross-play with Origin and Battlefield with Xbox. They're not doing cross-play or cross-buy. Activision's not doing it. They got their own servers. They got their own, but Bethes- they got their own, uh, um, what is it? The, um, not Bethesda. They got their own, um, Blizzard. They got Blizzard servers and everything they use for World of Warcraft and Overwatch. That's where Call of Duty's going. They're not using Microsoft servers. So Microsoft has used the games that we expect, the quality of games that we used to get out of them, and they use them as sacrificial lambs for the services. That's why Crackdown is in the state that it's in. They showed it too early. They were trying to. They were trying to do again. Throw shit against the wall, guys. If we talk DirectX 12 and cloud and all this other stuff, you know, maybe we'll we'll get some mind share. Well, they did it. Bit him in the ass because now they showed all that stuff and it was all fake. And we'll see what Crackdown turns into. But Crackdown is gonna be a fun. It's gonna be a mess. No matter where it comes out, it's gonna be a, a kind of. I bet you it's gonna be a mediocre. T- That's the reason why Terry Crews is in it. Just like they did with Quantum Break. They tried to, they took generic character one and they threw in Sean Ashmore and go, oh, well, we got celebrity power into it. So maybe people will be like, oh, Quantum Break with Sean Ashmore. Here we go. They're doing the same thing right now with Crackdown. Generic uh, agent one. No, let's make it Terry Crews. Terry Crews is Crackdown. And they're trying to kind of like hide, like Wizard of Oz style. That yeah, this might not be the crackdown that you want, but Terry Crews is in it. Hey, Quantum Break might not be that appealing to you because it's a generic character, but Sean Ashmore, the guy that played uh, the Iceman, he's in it. Terry Crews don't care, but Microsoft is using the celebrity, just like they did at the Xbox One X launch. They had Victor Cruz and and guys playing. They had uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his name? Uh, Odell Beckham Jr. Was playing the uh, the Xbox X. This is amazing. Blah blah blah. In, in, in the Microsoft store, they do that celebrity bullshit. Hell, a year ago at uh, Comic Con, they had all the celebrities playing Crackdown. Destroyed it. So Microsoft loves trying to throw celebrities in it to try to get that public appeal, to try to get that interest, that that general interest in the game, and try to sell it to somebody who doesn't know what the game is, but they know who the actors are. And now they're doing that now with Crackdown. And they did the same thing with Quantum Break. So tell me how Quantum Break turned out. It was, a, it was an all right game. And they tried to put some celebrity power into it. Tried to cover it up. And that's what they're doing with Crackdown. 
But the thing is, is that our games are suffering. And that was my biggest fear with all this server stuff and all this service shit. It's that my fear when Microsoft announced these features like, like Game Pass, like Play Anywhere, I just didn't want them to make their games for those services. And I know that's probably stupid to think that, but I just didn't want my game, just like when you have a mobile game and you know all those games that say free on your phone, install for free, you know they all got a hook. You know they all got ads or they got some sort of coins that are going to expire in a day. And you know that. And it kind of deters you from downloading all those free games on your phone. And I just didn't want my console games to turn into that. And it seems that they're, they're going to, at least from Microsoft's way. Now, I'm not saying I'm not about multiplayer, let's fight, map packs, all that. No, bring that on. But don't give me bare bones games and say, oh, well, we're going to ship content every other month for you because you're going to pay $10 a month to stay subscribed to see what the new content is. And that's, and, and that's their way of saying, oh, the season pass is free. Yeah, because you're going to be paying $10 every month to wait for the next pass. Oh, we'll see if these content's free. Yeah, you pay $60, and then, oh, here comes the one end of July. So guess what? If you stayed subscribed since April, right? Was it April, March? March, April, May, June, July. Hey, that's $50 that you just paid. Yes, you didn't pay for one game, but if see if these was the reason why you subscribed to Game Pass, and that was the game, because believe me, Game Pass, before Microsoft said their first-party games were going to Game Pass, Game Pass was a dead zone, man. It was a nice service, but the games in there were all 360 games, and they were old Xbox games, Xbox One games. It wasn't that great. But when they said their games are coming day and date there, all of a sudden Game Pass became such a value, and I agree it is. But Microsoft is not generous here. They're not going to give you the full-fledged, complete game. They're not giving you God of War day one launch Play it for 20 hours. Thank you very much. Microsoft is going to make sure there are hooks in their games to sustain a subscription. And ever and every single one of their first-party games is going to be that. It is going to have DLC, but they're going to have a hook. Now, if the hook is giving me 25% of a game and trickling out the rest of it, that's what's going to work at. And they talk about episodic content. They just said Halo Infinite games as a service. And he, and he related to Sea of Thieves. He didn't go back and say, oh, well, Halo 5 was a games as a service. We added a lot of content to that multiplayer. No, he used Sea of Thieves, saying times are changing. Well, it's the mobile model. Xbox has turned into the mobile model, and PlayStation is going to go more traditional. And I would say, and the last point I'm going to make is that the future, the future, the future. Everybody's saying Microsoft's the future. They're getting ready. with streaming. Game Pass, the future. The thing is, if the if if... The ex if the PlayStation and Nintendo were failing and falling flat on their face with the traditional routes that they're taking, like if Nintendo was just not selling consoles, they weren't leading an MPD with their games. If, if, if Nintendo and Sony were both falling flat on their face and Microsoft's going, it's all about service, it's all about this, then I could see where Microsoft's coming from. But PlayStation and, and Sony and Nintendo are flying high, doing the traditional route of releasing amazing exclusive games, getting the third-party content, and making their closed platform special for those who desire it and want to buy it. And doing that traditional method of a console, why a console exists, they are being successful in that. And Microsoft is trying to scramble around and figure way. Yes, Karazin, perfect example. Look at Octopath. That has taken Frogs, one of my good friends from playing Xbox, and he's playing his Switch all the time. He's uploading screenshots. Because it's, an ex it's a game that only can be played there. That's the thing. It's a game. It's traditional. It's not the, the developer of Octopath and Reggie are not going, oh, everybody should play Octopath. I want it everywhere, everywhere. No. Go to the store, buy a fucking Switch, and play Octopath. 
Spider-Man. Karazin's dropping, dropping the news. Spider-Man. Red fucking console. Game. Oh, Spider-Man's for everybody. Come. Oh, everybody should play Spider-Man. Go buy a PlayStation. You want to play Spider-Man. It works. But Phil is like, oh, hey, Master Chief. Everybody wants to touch Master Chief. Everybody wants to touch Marcus Phoenix. Everybody wants to touch the cat, the pirates, and see if these. Every, everybody needs to touch it. Yeah, well, jack of all traits, master of none. And that's why you're number three in MPD and always have been. You can release $500 consoles, next-gen consoles, nothing's going to change because the message coming out of you is everybody should play all games. Well, thank you very much for the charity work. I will play on the Nintendo and Sony, and I will milk your free games and free services on the PC. Thank you very much. I don't give a shit if you win. All I know is you lost the console. You lost the console. Yeah, you might make money because I'm playing on a Windows computer. Yay! My job is not making you money. I don't give a shit. My job is playing games. That's the reason why I do this shit. I play games. And if you're not giving me games, you're useless to me. I'm a consumer. You give me nothing to consume, you're useless to me. Nintendo and Sony are dropping consumer. Oh, look at this. Look at this. That I got to figure out. Like, shit, am I going to go buy another Spider-Man Pro? I can't buy another con. I can't hide that shit. It's red. That's not something I can put under the TV. Go, oh, no, honey. I always had that PlayStation. She's a big bullshit. You had a, what the hell is that big fucking red thing there? I'm like, oh, shit. That's a new one. I'm sorry. You can't hide that red one. I can't, that's why I can't. I can't like sneak the Star Wars one. You could sneak in because it's black. It looked like the other ones. Oh yeah, no, it always had those marks on it. You're not gonna be able to do that with the Spider Man one. That shit's gonna be a sore thumb. It's like, oh shit, that's a brand new console. But it's desirable. It's something that you want. And Nintendo and Sony are so successful doing the traditional route. And Microsoft people say Microsoft's talking the future. They're still making money. Who gives? I know. Who gives a shit? They're making money. I don't give a shit. They're not going to go bankrupt because of Xbox. But the fact is that they're making money and you're not playing any games. So who's the fool? You're sitting here. To wait. Oh, well, they bought four studios. I'll just sit here and wait with my hands folded for games from you. Third-party games, it's not about third-party games. It's about exclusive games that you only get on the platform. Exclusives matter. Exclusives matter. Exclusives matter. Exclusives matter in everything. Everything. Netflix, AMC, everything. Everybody got exclusives. Amazon got exclusives. Amazon Prime. Every, in every media, exclusives matter because there's competition and you got to differentiate from the competition. There's competition in everything. You need exclusive content. You need exclusive features. You need, you need uniqueness. If you just say, well, I'm just the same as everybody else, I'm going to be like, well, I'm not going to do oh, Why would I want you? If you're the same as everybody else, then I'm just going to go get the thing that gives me something unique, like a PlayStation, and then I'm going to use your free services because you still charge people on a console. But they're free on PC. So if you're going to be generous to me as a consumer who buys everything, then I'm going to find the easiest way out. And my easiest way out is to use, not pay for Xbox Live, chat with all my friends on the phone, on my PlayStation, on, on my PC, and play your games. And the thing is, you're not releasing that many games that I really need to buy a console for. It's not like you're dropping exclusives or giving me amazing play, uh, Xbox, Microsoft Studios games every month. Fuck, you give me two a year. It's not even like you got to go buy it. It's not even like this pressure on you to go, oh, my God, Microsoft is just dropping Microsoft Studio games in January, February, March. It, my God, they're stacked. And then when the games come out, they're mediocre on top of that. There's 68s and 65s. So it's not even that you you release few games a year, like three and two, and they come out at 60s with lack of content and bugs. 
Like people make it a deal, like, oh, Sea of Thieves is getting better. Sea of Thieves was a 68 because of lack of content. State of the K2 was a 68 because it had bugs and glitches. Like, these are development problems. They were not not good games. Like, they were broken at launch. They were broken. So, like, the best thing is to get a PC. You don't have them. They give you nothing to invest in. Yeah, Shadow of Gold Edition. And that gives a play anywhere, too. That's one of the few play anywheres. There's, like, two of them. But... That's the whole point of this whole thing. And it's so hard. Uh, you know, I, 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 I have this whole thing in my head and how I feel about it. And this is how I feel about it. I'm not saying that everybody else needs to feel the same way. But this is just how I feel about it. And I feel that I lived and breathed Xbox. Like, I, follow, I know the stories. I, I play everything. My gamer score is like 95,000, 94,000. Then I haven't increased it in the last year or so because I haven't played. I've been getting some on my computer, but I've been playing all the exclusives the PlayStation has, and I got tons of trophies now with that stuff. But I'm not a completionist. It's because I play everything. I downloaded everything. I game passed. I was in the preview program. I beta tested Connect. I was all into it. Almost have a hundred thousand gamer score. Twelve years on Xbox Live. I haven't renewed in February. It was the end of it. So this is really. A difference for me that I haven't felt this way about them. Like it was building, and now I'm just I'm just tired of the bullshit and the excuses for them. We should be calling them out. And the fact that yes, they bought studios is wonderful, but the fact that we're sitting here of last year and this year in the state that we are shows that Xbox is expendable to them. The fact that they are willing to just let it like drop off the face of the radar. And also, too, they focus on PC because guess what, guys? The things that they announced this year with the Halo Wars and Halo Tactics and the Halo on um, Halo with Dave and Busters and stuff like that shows that their head is not in the game. Their head is not at the console. They must have, they ball washed all of us at E3 going, oh, the console, the console, the console. And then they talk about Gears Tactics only on PC. But like, they really don't – then the head is not in the game. Their head is elsewhere. They're, they're seeing success beyond the console. And and for that, I can't buy a console from somebody that doesn't believe in the thing that they're selling. Yes, the thing that they're selling will run the games that they're making, but their heart and passion is not in the console business anymore. It is in the gaming business, like a third-party publisher. You want to make games that everybody could play? Then just go put them on a Switch, put them on a PlayStation, put them on PC. Like, why are you even investing in a console anymore? And why are people even fighting for that console anymore, thinking that they're going to change? Unless they come out and Phil goes, yeah, all that stuff I said for the last four years is complete bullshit. We are totally in the console space. Console exclusives. Fuck PC. Here we are. Xbox bleed green. If he does that with the next Xbox, it's going to be a slap of Faribay, but... You know, I wish they would do that. I would kind of wish that, you know, that well, this was bullshit. And on top of that, talking about crossplay, um, you see what they did with uh Halo Wars 2? You see what they did with Halo Wars 2? Let me tell you what they did with Halo Wars 2. If not, go follow me on Twitter, Jez7780. But I'm gonna tell you what they did. They updated it. Right? They updated it and they basically said, and Savage Yuga, yep, I agree. I wish that too. I know. So, uh, Halo Wars 2, they updated it now and has cross play. Well, guess what? It also removed the ability to filter out who you're playing with, PC or console. They merged them all together now. And there's no choice. Two versus two, it could be anybody, a console or PC. They removed the playlist that was console only. So they want to talk about cross play and cross play. Now that's a strategy game. Somebody with a, a mouse and keyboard is moving guys faster than you with your controller. And they didn't separate those playlists. And you want to know why? 
You want to know why? It's because the install base is not there. This whole cross-play thing is not a plan. See, everybody sits there and goes, oh, cross-play, Microsoft's the future. No, it is a gamble. It is a, it is a risk move. Microsoft is doing this because they don't have the install base to sustain it. They did it in Gears of War 4 too. The PC people couldn't find the game. They threw them in the social playlist. So when you play Gears of War 4 social playlist, there could be PC people in there because they couldn't sustain a PC and they couldn't sustain a console. So when everybody's like, oh, Microsoft is future thinking with crossplay, they're not. They are trying to keep afloat because they do not have the 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 mind share of the gamer to sustain a functional multiplayer game across platforms. Hence the problem with multi-platform development. You got to merge them now. So Halo Wars 2, now enjoy it. Enjoy it, everybody, because there's your future. Is that the future you want? Because when Phil Spencer was talking crossplay and people yeah, too. I think it is. I think it's 30 frames per second, too. Savage. I think it is. People all oh, know there. No, 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 no. There'll be playlists for console people to opt out of it. They will. Be, yeah. If Microsoft really wants this to work, they got to put in the development time to ensure that the paid subscribers. Now, think of this, people. You are paying $60 a year to play Halo Wars to play online on Xbox Live, right? You play Halo Wars 2. Now, against all your better judgment now, you just downloaded the new update, and now it forces you to play with free PC gamers who are going to run the game faster and better controller than you. Now, I think Microsoft is going to counter this with keyboard and mouse support for Xbox. But now it becomes a shit show because people could be using keyboard and mouse on an Xbox versus the controller. You got to have the option to filter that. What happened to options, Phil Spencer? What happened to options? And people, this is not me making this shit up. This is true. Microsoft is not putting in the effort. They keep talking so much. Yap, 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 yap. And that's what gets my grinds my gears about them. Yap, yap, yap. They talk, but they 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 cower and they do not put in the work needed to make this work. And that's the problem that I have with this whole thing. Now, I'm not no Halo Wars 2 player, but I see that and go, if they really want it to work, then they should have separate playlists. But again, I bet you the people on, on PC, they don't tell us numbers, but I bet you the PC sales of that game is not probably that great because people don't like that Windows store. And I bet you they had to merge them. They did it with Gears 4. Hell, they took Call of Duty last uh, World War II and removed it from the Windows 10 store because the people couldn't find games and they refunded everybody. The same stuff happened with Windows Mobile. They're not getting the mind share. You need to focus on the console. But now as a paying subscriber to Xbox Live, you don't know who you're playing with. You don't know who you're playing with anymore. And everybody that you're playing with, it could be playing for free. And you're paying like a fool. And now they're taking those free people and throwing them in your game with better controls, better frame rates. And you're sitting there with $60, 30 frames per second, live member, and now you're forced to play with them. Is that the future? That's the future? Is that what people are talking about on Twitter? Or they're talking about the four studios that Microsoft bought? That we're not going to see a game for them in probably three years. And who the hell knows? Another funny thing. It's like, I think before E3, everybody was talking about, oh, the Forza caught game. Oh, a Halo announcement inside Xbox. Yeah, the Forza caught game turned out to be a mobile game for the PC Windows 10 store. Not even on Xbox. The Halo announcement for inside Xbox was the Halo Dave and & Busters. And then... Gears, oh, I don't want a Gears XCOM game. Don't worry. You're not getting it. PC gets it exclusively. How do you put a game on PC? Excuse me. How do you get a uh, XCOM game on PC exclusive? Oh, because it doesn't work on console? Well, XCOM showed that it does. So, 
That's not the future. That's why when people say Microsoft's the future, it's bullshit. They're not the future. They're throwing shit against the wall and seeing what sticks. And if Sony and Nintendo were failing, I would say, oh, Microsoft might have something. But they're doing better than they ever have done. And to traditional games, Horizons, God of Wars, Detroit, traditional models. And what's great, what's good about the PlayStation stuff, I'm going to say right now, there's a balance. Sony is hitting the areas that the third party is not focusing on. Third party is doing the games as a service. Exactly, Curzon. The last place does not decide the future. They're keeping the lights on over there for Xbox. They're scrambling around. They got so much money to spend. They're like they're basically brainstorming and throwing anything they think could do. But Sony is hitting on a niche that people don't have. Ubisoft is a games as a service. EA with service games. Rockstar. Everybody is doing third party. I mean, games as a service. And Sony is saying, nah, it's single-player traditional games. Same with Nintendo. Mario Tennis is not a service game. It is a game. Kirby is just a game. It good games. Zelda is just a game. Super Mario Odyssey is just a game. There's not a service. There's no, like, Mario subscription plan. Third party is doing the service stuff. Nintendo and Sony are offering unique content that is traditional for their system. There's a balance on the PlayStation. Hell, the PlayStation even has VR, which gets its own exclusives. Another kind of thing. So Sony is focusing on all single-party traditional games with DLC and the things because people want that. They got VR and they got checkerboard rendering that gives you just as close to for that for $400, $100 less than the competition. The traditional gaming needs to exist. Microsoft is just jumping into the same boat that everybody else is. Everybody's trying to compete for your dollar for your services. Oh, are you going to subscribe to the Minecraft Pass? Or are you going to use the Halo Pass or the Gears of War Pass? Oh, and then Game Pass and then Xbox Live Pass on top of that pass. Oh, and then the Ubisoft Gold Edition Pass. And then the EA's Pass for Anthem. And then this pass. Like, you get fucking passed out, basically. And Microsoft is just doing what everybody else is doing. PUBG, just, uh, they're just trying, they're just jumping into a third party. And that's why it's so monotonous over there because they're just doing what everybody else is doing. And meanwhile, Nintendo and Sony are doing their own thing and they're balancing out their, their infrastructure. So when you play a PlayStation, if you want to play a VR game, you got it. You want to play a single player game and get lost in a single player game and not worry about. I'm going to give you the last example. I, I could go on now. I, I'm, I'm fucking on. This is crazy. I've been, I'm going to lose my voice. Shadow of War. You just talked about it. Who? Some my guy, one guy, one of my guys said it. What's this guy? Was it Chief or no? Who was it? It was, uh, yeah, Chief. Shadow of War is 35 bucks on sale. They just updated it. They removed all the microtransactions out of it because it didn't need it. And I remember when that game was announced, I was like, why did they put microtransactions in that game? It was all about the 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 nemesis system and the, the not nemesis but like yeah the nemesis system and 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 building the things and, and the loot and stuff. Now you can just buy goblins, buy trolls. They removed it completely out of there because they were trying to do a service thing. They were building the game for a service. See what I mean? That's what Microsoft is doing. They're building their games for the service. It doesn't work. You just gotta make a good game. You don't make a game and then put service bullshit in it. And there's the list. There it is. Savage Yoga. There it is. Metroid Prime 4. Bayonetta 3. Days Gone. Last of Us 2. Ghost of Tsushima. There you are. They're just games. There's no all oh, the last of us. Oh, in order to get those amazing animations, we had to use the cloud. And then, you know, it's going to be that the cloud is being used for those animations. And. I don't give a shit what's being used. It looked amazing. And that's the thing. Just make a game. And that's when Microsoft has lost its way. They're focusing on the, and like I said before, the reason why they're doing it is they're using our games as sacrificial lambs because they want to demonstrate their technology. So developers will use their technology and Microsoft 
will get, like that's why why do you think they bought havoc they got simple gone they're buying tools and then they're gonna build games i bet you damn well that fucking um all that first party is gonna use simple gone or something like that because they're building games with their tools and then they're gonna go around at at a gdc and stuff and go to the dev going you could do that game too with our tools and then microsoft sits back and collects the royalties uwp how did that work we talked about uwp works so well kerosene says it uwp works so well that gears tactics is not even getting ported over to the xbox this whole like you develop it once and it's a shell and it worked on your console and on your pc and it works so that their own studio coalition is not even using it for fucking uh, gears tactics it works so well no it's a business decision obviously but like come on it works so well it all this stuff nobody's using it shadow of war resident evil that's it did they announce anything at e3 about gate play anywhere i think an article came out saying how it's a failure nobody's using it only microsoft's using it and they're hoping that they can get their part and the only people they're getting is like the preview games or the little indies they're not getting the big publishers on it. They're not getting it. Nobody's going to make you buy your game once and play everywhere. No way. They want you to buy five versions of that game because they got to make sure that they sell enough copies to make back all the billions of dollars they spent on making the game. You think that they're going to spend... And that's another reason. Play anywhere? That's the reason why I feel like Microsoft is not going to invest $5 million in making a game because they're going to just give it out on multi-platform. Like Nobody's going to make a $5 million game like a budget of five million and go, yeah, we're just gonna sell it once and that guy could play it anywhere he wants. You're losing money. <laughs> You're losing money. You want to make a five million dollar budget game and go, uh, I want five million copies of that game, and I'm gonna do it to that one guy who wants to he wants to play on three different systems, go buy three copies. Thank you very much. I want five million. Platform like like, like third part publishers are not going to be like, oh, we're gonna put all this money in our games and then just buy it. Yeah, that's why I fear that Microsoft's games are gonna be low budget. They're gonna be mid tier because they're not gonna invest. They said it. I go down to the article. Shannon off this. They're afraid of spending money. Like he says it. Like even what's his name said it here. Um, the longevity of a game. That's what it. Are basically, you know, milking their games. Like they, 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 they have to stretch them out. And I don't think Microsoft's going to invest the like, like how much money Sony invested in God of War. Just so, like, oh. We invested all this money in God of War development, but you could go buy it once and play it on uh, uh, the Switch. Because you should go where your games go. Get the fuck out. They're not going to spend that much money. Those games are not going to be that kind of quality if you're going to do that. They're going to be mid. They're going to be mid-tier games. Like, oh, yeah, well, this game is only 100000 to make. You could play it any way you want, like a mobile game. So that's my other fear, is that making games for a service. But again... This is all speculation. This is how I feel about it. And, you know, I, I just, it, it really just grinds my gears on just the, the, all the talk. And that the, I'm glad that they're making money. But the thing is, is that they're making money at my expense of not having exciting games to play right now and, uh, and, and, and hoping that there might be something in the future. That doesn't excite me. I'd rather be Sony losing money when they're losing money and playing amazing games because I don't give a shit if they're making money or not unless they're going bankrupt and we're losing all the stuff. But like, I care about the end user experience and my end user experience on Xbox is just staring at a wall. That's why I don't play on it. There's nothing there. And I'm not replaying my old games. I'm not. I would have kept my 360. I got rid of it. 
And I'm not going to spend $15 to buy old 360 games so I can play them for 15 minutes. Go, oh, it looks better. Thank you. I played this already five years ago, 10 years ago. That doesn't last that long. Yeah. And they can make, yeah. Uh, you know what's on the last thing I'll say, like outside of gaming, like Satya spoke about his Office 365. And what's so amazing is that he spent the whole demo showing it on Chrome was showing it on an Android device. Microsoft doesn't have a mobile solution. They they can't beat them, so they're joining everybody. Just like they couldn't beat Apple, they put Office on the iPad. They couldn't beat Google, so they're trying to... Now they're trying to come out with that Surface Go to try to combat against Chromebooks and stuff like that, and the $400 one is not worth the damn, and the $550 one. They can't beat them. Microsoft is in the software business. They're not in the hardware business. All right, they're in the software business, and software is everywhere. They should just be third party. But the whole reason why they created the Xbox is lost because the focus now is on PC, and Xbox is just a Windows 10 device. And because of that, games are not going to be built from the ground up for the hardware, it's going to be built for PC and ported over. You got yourself a port box. An Xbox should be a P box because it's a port box, you're just going to get PC ports. And whatever the power of that system is, is what you're going to get. But to get a custom experience built for that hardware, like a God of War, like a Detroit, like like the magic that we see come out of Nintendo and Sony with their first-party games, like how Zelda runs on the Switch and stuff like that, I don't know if we're going to get that from Microsoft. And that's my concern is why would I be excited if they don't, don't care? Like, if it's just a Windows 10 device, then... They're happy if you just buy a computer and go for free. So, you know, I don't care what makes them happy. But the problem is, is because my problem is because they're focused on all this trying to be Windows 10 devices and all that stuff, the games, the game quality, the quality control, the content of the games, the amount of games, the types of games, all that stuff is suffering right now. As an Xbox gamer, you're suffering right now because you're getting delays of crackdown because of the cloud. You're getting mediocre games of CFDs to play anywhere in service style. Buggy games like State of K2 because it's trying to do a PC and an Xbox version. You have no game this this year. You got another Forza game this year. Forza is the only studio that's doing it, and it's the only studio that maximized the power of the Xbox by doing 1080p, 4K60. Nobody else did it native it's only that forza engine and they're not going to do 4k 60 in horizon it's going to be a, a 60 frame per second lower resolution mode so they're not doing 4k 60 on horizon they'll do dynamic probably 4k 30 frames per second i'm sure that's what it is but again that's not the end the end on be all of gaming because nobody was telling me what result i don't even know what fucking resolution uh god of war ran it was just an amazing little game and i was hitting that share button like crazy because it just looked amazing same thing with D-Trim Come Human. I'm like outside in the rain in the building. I'm like, oh, my God. And I'm moving. I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I didn't go like, oh, the, this is not 4K. I'm turning this shit off. No. The lighting, the pictures, the ambiance, the music, all that stuff matter. It's not just about resolution. You're never going to win chasing resolution. Just like if you were going, if you were trying to buy every single graphics card, you're never going to beat technology. Technology is always going to be ahead of you. As soon as you buy a game or a TV or anything, just like you ride a car off the lot, it depreciates. It's done. So chasing peas and resolution, you're not going to win. you got to have a static environment and have developer quality and focus and focus, 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 focus. And they're not focused. They're all over the place. And they want this Minecraft model, but you can't force Minecraft in everything. You need to have a balance. Every game you release cannot be a three- and four-year service game because the content and quality is going to suffer if you try to make every type of game like that. And that's what they're doing. And that's why I just I don't support it. You just got to make good games. Get... Don't try to put Windows features in the games. Just make good games. 
The other two are doing it, and they're successful. You have to do it, too. And, you know, I'm just going to drop off, guys. I want to thank you again. I probably talked about two hours, and I don't know what the hell I talked. But I got to get a drink. My voice is, is hoarse. But I didn't do this in a while. I appreciate it. About like 11 viewers at the time. I want thank you very much. You know, I'm growing my channel. I'm at 100. So share the message. You know, get people on here. I love having people. Again, this is just my opinion. I'm a very passionate gamer. And, you know, I just I just believe in what I believe in. I, I you know, I, I sold cameras. I sold electronics. I'm into technology. And, you know, just want to, you know, I, I just rant because I, I feel very passionate about this stuff. This is not an act. I'm not. Uh, this is how I feel. So I'll just share it out, tweet it out. Twitter, uh, Jez 7780. Um, you know, and you know, this is all speculation. They might announce something next week or something that flips the lid on everything. But this is just going off the base of what I'm reading and what I'm predicting is where they're going. You know, it is what it is. And you know, follow me. I'm uh Jez 7780X on PlayStation, uh, and Jez 77 on Xbox slash PC and uh, over on Xbox Live. So uh and uh, yeah, and thank you. And you know, shout out to all the guys. Karazin, love the engagement. Thank you very much. Sav, Cocoon, Prince, Chief, you were in here. I saw the Chief. I got the link in that thing too, uh, that article. <laughs> and I had who I had. Uh, oh, I have to say his name right. Let me say Alish in here. And Jeremiah in here. And we got Biles Moose. Let's see. Uh, Meds Comma. Call me a Jersey cat. That's right. New York cat, actually. <laughs> but uh, don't call me Danny. Love my next joke. Uh, but thank you again, everybody. And this is out. This is Jet 7780 signing off with another grinds my gears. Thank you very much. <laughs>